Hey, welcome back to Accidental Science, Claudio here. Today we will look at what's inside an encoder. Oh, don't you know what it is? Don't worry! An encoder is a device that provides an encoded information of its position in discrete whole numbers. Linear encoders give you an information of the position along a line, while rotative encoder, like this one, give you the information of the angle. And you can have absolute encoders like a ruler that gives you the index of the position, like a, the, ex, the actual number, the actual number you have 10, 20, 21, 22, and so forth. While incremental encoders give you just the number of pulses they see as long as they move along a line or along a rotation. And this is an example of linear encoder that we can find in many printers. And the most common is the incremental encoder that comes with uh, two or three channels. It's called incremental encoder because uh, it provides uh, pulses that you can count uh, and you can uh, get uh, the incremental position as long as you count the pulses. And you can even uh, um, go beyond the full revolution and continue to count the pulses. And the most common encoders are incremental encoders with two or three channels. Uh, one channel is used to give you the number of pulses, the second channel is used to know the direction and the third channel gives you the information of one point uh, of zero around one revolution. It's pretty simple as long as you rotate the encoder, the encoder give you, gives you the pulses that you can count uh, to know the position. Hey, wait a minute! Also magnetic and conductive contacts encoders do exist. However, I will cover in this video optical encoders only. So let's see, for example, this one that I have connected to the uh, power supply. And uh, as long as, as, as I rotate uh, the, the, the shaft, uh, you can see here at the oscilloscope, uh, you can see the pulses that comes out uh, from the, the output. So, for example, an encoder can be attached to the base of a, uh, an arm of a robot arm uh, or at the joint of a robot arm to know the angle position, the angular position. Uh, or it can be connected to uh, uh, the, the shaft of a, of a motor or, or to a lead screw to know where the lead screw moves uh, along a linear position, counting the number of pulses in rotation that, because as long as you rotate the lead screw the lead screw converts the rota rotative uh, motion into a linear motion so you can convert the rotational pulses into linear movement linear pulses so for example let's say you have a lead screw that has a pitch of four millimeter per revolution which is about uh, six turns per inch and um, and with a, an encoder of 200 pulses per revolution, you can reach a resolution of uh, 4 over 200, uh, 0 0.02 millimeter per pulse, uh, or 2 hundredths of millimeter. The signals that come from the encoder, um, a typical encoder, with uh, three channels, uh, A, B, and Z. A provides the uh, number of pulses, the count, B provides the information of the direction and Z provides the information of the zero point uh, across a longer uh, one whole revolution. If we move in one direction we see uh, the pulse in A will uh, rise when uh, the uh, pulse in B is zero. But uh, if we move in the opposite direction, we can see the, the pulse in A will rise when the pulse in B is high. So, uh, discriminating between this uh, condition, the status, uh, if this is high or low, we can understand if we are moving in one direction or in the uh, opposite direction. And you can notice that uh, if we uh, count the ages of uh, each uh, um, signal we can multiply by four the, na the, the resolution because we, because we have one two three and four 
ages before the next uh, cycle the cycle is this so in one cycle we have four ages so we can multiply by four um, the resolution of the encoder but this is quite an advanced uh, concept uh, uh, so I would keep this aside in this video so let's see what's inside this uh, encoder this is a made in Italy encoder taken from a machine a dismantled machine it's uh, 1024 pulse per revolution and uh, when we do this task uh, it is important to to work with a very clean uh, environment because uh, yeah uh, the dust w w could ruin your your ruin the encoder could enter inside and cause problems and with the readings and uh, this is hard to remove okay let's move this way yeah it is likely sealed inside yeah we have here a o-ring that uh, seals the inside and voila we have inside of an encoder it's a little bit of dust here that should not be here and you can see here there is the disk where the with a, a lot of slots that um, gives the information the, the pulses and here we have the a series of LEDs and the photo detectors that read uh, the signal One, two, three, four, detect five. This guy has uh, actually has four detectors here. It has four detectors uh, and because it multiply by two the number of pulses that uh, has the disk uh, to reach the number of 1024. Uh, so the disk uh, we have uh, like uh, 512 uh, marks and um, and uh, having two detectors for uh, each direction provides the information for 1024 pulses and uh, in other words uh, it, it doubles the number of uh, marks that are uh, in on the on the disk and uh, and here we have uh, uh, the three trimmers that uh, re adjust the current that goes to the the uh, photo uh, photo diodes uh, the, the LEDs to, to adjust the current uh, the intensity of the, the light and then uh, the signals comes here to this uh, to this uh, IC which is an LM339 which is a comparator for comparators uh, analog comparators that uh, in turn uh, goes here to this IC which is a uh, four four differential line drivers and uh, the output of this uh, goes to this pins and so we have here uh, for sure a positive signal and a negative signal signal for each uh, channel providing much more noise immunity so let's check this okay I think this uh, should be fine even with uh, 12 volt <laughs> let's try uh, 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 we have a problem mm -mm -mm -mm. is it limited to 5 volt this one <laughs> it was meant to work at 5 volt uh. and let's open even this one this is a Lika and uh, 
The first thing to do is to remove the seal. But I'm not, I'm not afraid to avoid the guarantee. Again, everything must be cleaned very well. It is not like working with a hard disk, but uh, uh, grime and dust must be removed. And let's remove the, the, the screws that keep all together. And it slowly slides the case off to reveal what's inside. And voila! We can see here there is, uh, as in the other encoder, we have the disk and a PCB with the circuit, uh, circuit board. Uh, and here we can see better the, the internal disk, the dial, and uh, the back of the PCB where there is a comparator that's similar to the one that we've seen before the same comparator so let's remove even the PCB from its place and slowly slides from one side to avoid to hit the, the, the dial, the disk and here we can see the disk, internal disk that uh, is black uh, with a lot of slots, uh, transparent slots uh, or marks uh, that uh, provide the information As you can see here there's one single slot uh, for the zero and uh, a lot of slots for the pulses and here the, the, the PCB has the, the detectors and here an important point that can be seen is the uh, is the mask that is used to check uh, here we can see better the mask across the, the holes and uh, the mask allows to have better precision for the dial the encoder has a disk with uh, a number of uh, marks or slots uh, um, on, on it so the light can pass through the disc the disc is black and uh, and the marks are, are white are transparent and here of course i've designed it with <laughs> black over white but uh, uh, have you, as you can, as you have seen, the disc is black uh, and the um, slots are uh, transparent, and uh, and then we have uh, and and the number of marks or slots uh, around the disc uh, gives the number of pulses that the disc can provide. So and and the encoder, the number of pulses of the encoder. But as we have seen in the other encoder. Uh, if we add uh, more sensor, more detectors, uh, we can increase the number of, of pulses. We we'll explain this in a moment. And uh, then we have a mask uh, that is used to match exactly the the, the slots. Uh, the mask has uh, uh, the same kind of slots, uh, and um, and uh, and this is overlapped to the the disc. So when the 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 slots uh, match together the light will pass through and uh, the detector will read the light uh, and um, and uh, this gives a uh, high precision for the detection of the of the marks and the slots and this one single slot here or here and this mark is uh, is the zero as you can see, it's just one slot uh, in one uh, whole revolution. And this is a magnified section of the disc with the, the slots. And you will notice that uh, we have just uh, one slot, uh, but the encoder can provide uh, two signals, uh, uh, quadrature signals, uh, out of phase of 90 degrees. How that is possible? But if, if we put uh, uh, two detectors uh, uh, in this position, this way, we can detect, uh, uh, we can have this two signals uh, uh, with just one trace of slots. Uh, 
as you can see here this is just in the middle of the of the of the pulse this one is out of phase in respect to this uh, by 90 degrees also if we add more detectors uh, slightly uh, shifted uh, in respect to the uh, center of the um, of the slot uh, we can have more uh, resolution more pulses that can be combi combined together to get uh, more resolution as we've seen with this uh, encoder so this is how the circuit is made inside of the of this encoder um, we have um, here a comparator which is a uh, LN339 here we have the uh, opto um, detector uh, with uh, an LID an infrared LID that is powered through this resistor and uh, and this uh, a trimmer that adjusts the current that flow that flow through the diode and here a photodiode or phototransistor that um, that uh, moves this point uh, from uh, from z from sorry uh, plus 5 volt uh, to towards zero through this resistor and here we have a back uh, a feedback uh, positive feedback uh, that increases the speed uh, at which this uh, comparator um, switches and uh, provides um, a threshold uh, that makes this uh, comparator works as a, a, a Schmidt trigger. This is pretty much the circuit. Uh, I've attempted to hack this circuit, uh, adding uh, uh, here and here uh, a, a diode and a, an LED, and here and here. Uh, a photo detector but I don't have any so I, I have, <laughs> have tried to uh, I thought to put here an, an LED from uh, an opto switch uh, an LED and a photo diode from an opto switch but uh, it doesn't fit <laughs> it's too big <laughs> so all right uh, that's pretty much all for today I hope you enjoyed this video, if so, hit the like button and, uh, and stay curious and hungry of knowledge. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.